So it is a bit of an art. If you've tried to write headlines or you've uh, ever been charged with writing them, even captions. I mean, the neat thing about today's content, as we all know, is that it is um, written in sound bites and sometimes longer form if we can expand into multi-paragraph captions on our Facebook posts occasionally or LinkedIn articles. I always say if it turns into more than a few sentences, turn it into an article, not just a, a status update or a Facebook or LinkedIn post. Or of course, a blog, long form blog content, which we've talked about at length at Social School in terms of its SEO value, its you know authority building and thought leadership value because you can get a little meatier and deeper. But as I was at a girlfriend's gym last night, helping her with the final stages of her reopening before you know the COVID doors slam open again, um, I had to bring up an article about 40 tips for writers that I just saw in an email a couple weeks ago, number 22. Uh, give your reader some credit. Don't say more than you have to. And basically every single piece of writing that is really, really powerful, it's, uh, it doesn't, it's not long-winded. It's got as few words as possible. Like brevity is an art. And you've heard me talk about my former editors at the, at the newspaper when I was at the, the Calgary Sun and the Calgary Herald and, um, and how they had just perfected it over the years. And it's just like writing, it takes time. So when you're writing in captions and sound bites, you've just got to get down to work and start um, you know, improving as you go, but also ruthlessly eliminating words, seeing what other people are doing and just starting to come up with stuff that really hits at home. And when I say hits at home, we're talking about creating like imagery, video, graphics, animations that, that are made like they're an eight out of 10. And then when that killer captions added, it's a 10 out of 10. And this can happen and it's, it's super cool when it does. So we're gonna look at a few different ways today that we can write headlines really, really well. If you have any thoughts as we go, please by all means uh, chime in. I really, really love talking about short form writing because I do feel like it's one of the hardest things that we do and that we're expected to know how to do as marketers and we don't necessarily give ourselves a whole lot of credit or learning opportunities around it. So welcome to headlines, taglines and sound bites and uh, some of the skills within it. I'm gonna challenge you at the end of today to try and write a few yourself. So you know, our academy, we've got a few other courses that go deeper into this in our social media marketing uh, certificate in particular. Course number two is content writing and publishing. We go deep into this stuff. So if it, if you feel like you need, need a little more, I'd encourage you to check that out. Uh, and then there's, of course, so many experts on the internet from Grammar Girl to, you know, journalists who give writing tips all the time that can help kind of hone this skill and, um, you know, make your content sing. So starting off with our voice and our brand, of course, most of us feel like we know our voice, we know our purpose, we know our tone, but I guess my question is, do we really? How has it evolved? Has it changed since COVID or does it change just throughout the year with the seasons and campaigns that you're running? And the whole idea here is that we've got to feel like our voice and the words and the captions coming out in our content match the overall purpose, especially some of the more, you know, emotionally charged purpose that our brand may have that we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks. And uh, where, do we, where do we bring it to life? How do we showcase that? So what we're doing here is just getting a little bit more creative with our storytelling. We're trying to uh, explicitly show people what we're about um, in as few words as possible, both short and long. WestJet, I'm gonna use as an example right off the bat. They do a fantastic example or, um, uh, fantastic storytelling, both long and short form, but also every type of type of platform we can imagine from video to, you know, still images and Instagram carousels to big, big Christmas campaigns. But one of the things that has been so neat about WestJet is that for decades, ever since, you know, Twitter was born, they've been signing off with their initials. So if it's a customer service agent that's writing the tweet or it's a, you know, someone in marketing that's doing a showcase on a certain flight attendant um, or crew member or, or, or staffer, they're always using their names and their personality. And they're putting a human touch and a, a really creative storytelling angle to every single thing they do. And it just is very rarely promotional. Yes, we hear about their sales, but that's because they give, 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 give us tons of creative storytelling content and fantastic copywriting and headline writing. And then they ask for the purchase or they get the sale, give, 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 get. 
Sam Korea, local real estate agent, we've talked about a little bit. Like Haley's client, Tanya Eklund, Sam is so real. And he and his wife, Jacqueline, have taken a number of our courses and programs. We've gotten to know them over the years. And uh, he's just a funny guy. And he's the opposite, I think, of what a lot of us would just categorically assume about the industry. And that's a really neat place to be. When you're kind of dispelling myths and changing people's opinions about an industry as a whole, like that's incredible. If you know what those pushbacks are or those kind of contentious points about real estate agents showing up in a yellow Lamborghini like an obnoxious kid that I saw on the weekend. I couldn't even look at the guy as we were looking at a house and he was there being obnoxious. I was like, I hate to generalize, but there's my stereotype about this industry, perhaps. How can you break down any of those walls purposely with your storytelling, if need be? Maybe you don't have those types of roadblocks, but what is it that your people expect and think already? And then how can you just show up and use your own voice and face to prove them wrong or to bring them in? So along with our voice and the way we're saying the things we're saying, what is our tone? And how does this get conveyed in a way that makes us stand out and it's not super vanilla? We see brands do this really well. Um, big brands and small, of course. Lacroix uh, really has this very, very pastel, funky, fun, summer forward, young vibe to it that is very them. And the moment you see it and the moment you hear it, you know, kind of like that's them and they're not afraid of it. They're a little bit edgy with their captions and their posts. Likewise, Gary V, he is unapologetically himself and this is how he's made a brand. He has isolated and you know, alienated thousands of people. He's had to create secondary channels that are like curse-free Gary V for how many people he offends in his language. But he's trying to make a point and he's passionate about it. And at the heart of all of it, in all of his books, is the idea that he's giving as much insight, value, advice as he possibly can based on his own lived experience. And again, unapologetically doing so no matter who he offends and good on him. A lot of people resonate with him for a reason. So if it's connecting, and again, it's got that heart-centered, you know, emotional connection, amazing. Bar Body Studio in Calgary, again, does this really well by showcasing their people. They put their owner, their staff, so their instructors and their, their students um, or clients at the four, and they are just constantly cycling between those three pyramids of the triangle, I find, or points of the triangle. If it's not about, if Marlo's not posting herself as the owner being super authentic, it's a trainer doing it, or it's a showcase on a certain client and it just cycles through. It's really, really cool. They're not just focused on some of the more su superficial aspects of their industry. They're just being as real and authentic as they can and focusing on the positive. Uh, so we've talked a lot about our about statements, our elevator pitches, short and long, who we are, what we offer and why we do it. Giving people a reason to resonate with us and feel affinity like they belong. I've been thinking about, you know, examples of affinity and, and brand belonging this week because my husband is a diehard Montreal Canadiens fan and there's really no better example than sports teams or our, you know, alma mater university teams or whatever. When you feel like you have an ownership, a stake in a brand, or, you know, you've given people again, the keys to the brand to let them embrace it so hard that they are devastated if you don't show up or if you lose, um, then that's really, really cool. So a few ways that we can better find our brand voice before we start writing our headlines and taglines. Number one, we wanna define who we are. And we can do this in a few words, ideally, or if we can do it in a few words, we can more easily convey it to our team or just remind ourselves of what we stand for. They're our rally cry, like our, our true purpose. And even better if you can limit something of it, right? So we're this, but not that. Maybe there's some words in there that you can kind of think about for yourself. No, you, these don't have to be public statements, but again, they just further nail the person that you want to be as a company, as they say, you know, your brand is what they say about you when you're not in the room. And uh, it's, it's your brand as a person, if it were actually a human. Who is it? Who are you? Is it different from you personally, if you're a solopreneur? Um, what encompasses everything about you? You want to differentiate, of course. So what is it that's different about you? And what gives me a reason to choose you over them? And this is where so many of us fall short. We couldn't actually sum it up if we had to. And maybe if we're just competing on price, 
we need to think a little differently or we're just the only ones in our market and location is the factor here. But most of us have some kind of differentiating factor that again, we need to focus on um, showing and celebrating in ways that match our tone and voice and, and overall purpose. And then listen, inspire and engage. So of course we are aware of who our audience is and who we're trying to resonate with and have buy from us, not just once, but on the repeat. And we have to listen to them. We have to understand their language, their needs, their fears, desires in order to communicate in a way that makes sense to them. What kind of language are they using? What kind of shortcuts? What kind of tone? Are you gonna use acronyms or, or um, abbreviations? Are you gonna use the language of you know, what the kids are saying? Are you going to be on TikTok or straight up, you know, polished on LinkedIn? So of course we're listening and then reacting. It's that instead of give, get, give, it's get the information off of these people, give them what they need to hear and where they need to hear it and then get the sale. We want to be bold and we want to use action words and we want to be present tense. If you go back to grade nine English, speak in the present tense, avoid redundancies and slash every single word that you possibly can to make it so short and sweet. Um, my best friend at Undercard last night, she showed me the sign she wants to have on the board on the way in. I shouldn't be saying this, but I'm saying it. So she's ordered these massive sweet letters. And she's gone away from sort of a hip hop vibe, to be honest, because it was a boxing studio and that was the former brand. And now she's bought it out right from her partners. And it was actually quite exclusionary to let's just say the middle-aged woman or a person who didn't feel like they were, you know, a millennial or 20 something boxer, hip hop, cool kid. It was alienating a little bit and boxing is already a little bit intimidating. So one of her new pillars is inclusivity, which great, but I'm like, okay, is this the political inclusivity? Like what kind of inclusivity are we talking about? And what's the long game? Because I'm just putting on my brand hat here, not my, you know, politically correct hat and saying like, what's gonna, you know, what's gonna last over time? So rather than what she had was um, a re really big letters that say, you are welcome here when you come in. And I'm like, okay, I love the message. I love it. But what about something that isn't going to make me question, was I ever not welcome here? Huh? Or is this all about uh, like me too, LGBTQ, uh, Black Lives Matter? What are we talking about here? I'm at my boxing gym, which fine. But is that an Instagram post or is it literally your main tagline when I walk into the new undercard fitness studio, sorry, fitness club, no longer undercard boxing. It's got all these different um, kind of realms and offerings and stuff now. So instead of um, you are welcome here, I said, what about straight up welcome home? And one of the things that her trainers say and her, the reason that she has toughed it out to like gutting <laughs> levels of stress and debt and riding out COVID, reinventing, doubling down on the business when everybody else is closing their doors is because she can't walk away from the trainers who call that place home. And the people like me, I was driving there last night and I was salivating at the idea of going back to that gym because I love it. It's a second home. It's the only group fitness I've ever liked. It's the only way that I've really enjoyed. Like, you know, it's hitting and dancing and pretending you're 20. It's all the things that every single person that goes there could say they love. Um, so anyway, this is your home away from home, but either way, I said two words are so much stronger than five and also is the message diluted or kind of watery in the way that we're saying it. So less is more, um, be bold, speak to them, you know, say what you need to say, short phrases, get, get it there all day long if you can. And then of course, uh, evolve. We need to fully be aware. And it's the same reason she didn't order more neon signs. It's something that's got to be fluid and change. And that doesn't mean that the main taglines of the business have to be, you know, just seasonal captions like the Nike homepage, but it, um, it does certainly evolve with our people because look how fast we're changing as people and as society and as an audience of customers or prospects for your brand. So be fluid, listen, like get the feedback and then don't be afraid to go where they're going. 
uh, because we can expect that we can stay the same forever and not change. My favorite example here is that ivory soap. Back when ivory was the only game in town in 1952 or 1890, and, uh, and now they're nothing. They're a 99 cent bargain brand that actually costs Procter & Gamble money every year to keep afloat, but they've kept it alive because it's one of their legacy brands, even though it's actually a lost leader today because they didn't evolve their story, they haven't stayed relevant, and nobody gives a crap about the brand. So interesting. Um, so many examples we can think of where these companies had such an opportunity, the Sears catalog, to become an online retailer or whatever it is, and they just failed to change and evolve. Okay, so let's get into the meat here. Just 10 more minutes. Stick with me. So if we talk about our headlines, and it doesn't have to be a perfect post, but a pretty solid, awesome, highly resonating post, and one that's worth your time, and of course theirs, is one that hooks us. It leaves us wanting more and it doesn't give away the farm. It's that same kind of thing when you get the press release in the newsroom or you're flipping through the morning paper if you have the print edition or digital and that headline is so good, you'd click in, you dive in. And most of us do this with like less than four or 5% of our headlines today. If you think about your inbox, especially over in the promotions tab, if you've got that going on in your Gmail and you have it segmented into your, you know, marketing emails. My version of opening my promotional email now is scanning the subject lines of my promotional tab and maybe opening one of a hundred. And that's considered an open to me. At least I went in there this week or this whatever today. So how can we make that headline so click worthy that then and then it leads to further clicks and further kind of driving through the post once they get there it doesn't happen with overwhelm and it doesn't happen with long-windedness so the right words can move mountains and they absolutely compel us into action as readers as audience members as subscribers so clarity we're getting right to the point there's no questions asked and no confusion personality we're showcasing this we're letting it come through and that as a result is building trust and affinity towards us as a brand, as a person. And then resonance, it's that, yes, thank you. Where have you been? Hallelujah, this is like the weight off my shoulders. I can't believe that I didn't know this existed or that you're finally here for me. CPR. Okay, so a few examples of headlines. Uh, most people wouldn't necessarily think about them in this way, but I'm going to really break it down tactically. A few ideas, and if you can nail these, you can scale them back and not be super, super contrived and really edgy, but just always kind of be thinking of these as examples. The social proof headline, it's also kind of the referral. If they're doing this, so should you. So why thousands of Albertans will gather in Fort McMurray on July 1st. See the face cream that blew up the internet. It causes, it completely creates compelling curiosity. The threat headline, aka the fear. Use this wisely, but don't be afraid of it. The big lie hiding in your apartment rental contract. Warning, don't buy another ounce of dog food until you read this. Kind of clickbait, very clickbaity actually, but if you can back it up with a great set of facts or an article juice on the inside, amen, way to go. And then the gain is that promise. I love that. Ready for quiet, well-behaved kids? No, I don't have kids or yes, where, how, desperate, tell me. Give me 10 minutes and you'll be a master at tuning your guitar. So, so much more interesting than just the, you know, listicles. But we're going to look at those in a minute because they're also quite effective when done well. Any questions or thoughts on any of those or some examples? I know it's hard to come up with some, but I think that possibly we can relate because we've all seen those and clicked on them. Any favorites there? Something that really makes you want to read it? Okay, I'm going to force you to write your own at the end. Well, not force you, encourage. You know, because there'll be a gain or a threat or a social proof attached to it. Okay, so beyond that, we've got the long form headlines. This is kind of fun if you're a nerd like me. For one, do you case letter caps your headlines and your blog titles or do you not? Title caps. So the Globe and Mail does not. One thing that I used to do when I was unsure of how to spell something in the, in the newsroom is I would spell check and go to the news tab because CP style is Canadian print style guide, which is different from AP style. That's the American style. If you go back to your college days, if you have them, you know, when you're like quoting things and you had to do it in the right format and all that. 
Anyway, the, the shortcut for that is not to have a CP style book on your desk, but instead just to click on news and see how a reputable news organization in your city or country um, writes it. This has changed, of course, uh, since the internet got a little bit shorter. I now willingly break rules when it comes to writing out numbers under number 10, you're supposed to write them out, but we don't have time for or space for that on Twitter. Um, you know, the way that you abbreviate. All I would say is that if you're gonna break CP style rules and still try to look professional, be consistent with it. And of course that refers to how you write dates and cities and numbers, et cetera. Um, and then of course your capitalization as well. But bottom line, the long headline does exactly what it says, gives us a little more. You've got your header and your subheader. And the subheadline is drawing us in even more. Remember that every journalist is taught to write in a pyramid where the most important stuff is at the top. You're burying the lead, spelled L-E-D-E, I think, for some reason. It's got to have some meaning, but I've forgotten it. But if you put that way down at the bottom, then you've completely missed the point. No one's sticking around till that final climax of your story when it comes to reading an article or, or some piece of copy. They want it at the top and they're gonna skim the rest. And if it's really good, they'll read the rest and get all the way to the bottom, but don't bury it. The tabloid headline on the other hand, this is where copywriters who knew, know what they're doing really, really shine. My, like my friend Marty, who's writing them for the Calgary Sun every single day. And he walks out of his desk, as I've told a lot of you, smokes a cigarette on his way out the door and just throws down the day's front page headline. And it's usually two words or three. Um, and so the less that we can, or the more that we can learn from these, the better. These guys have been doing it for a long time. Also, just if it's not a catchy front pager, just take note of how short and sweet some of them are. And again, you want it in one line when it shows up on your Facebook caption or your Instagram caption, because people then don't have to open the post and they see it all. So if you can make sense of it and take out all those little in-between words, you should do it. Magazine headlines that are sort of more editorial, like Vogue or Inc, long. They're really, really long. So I would encourage you to go look at your favorite magazines or go look at what you're um, emulating or what brands you admire and just see how how they're writing them. And then more importantly, what makes you click through? And what do you think your readers will click through on too? And you can repeat like five places to travel is obviously an ongoing segment or feature that they're running on Vogue online. And um, you know, is it working? How do they have to evolve it over time? Paying attention to your stats to see how the subject line makes a difference or the subject. The, there's no shortage of tools to help us grade our subject lines and our blog titles because they matter. You can A-B test this if you want with one blog post written this way or one e-newsletter and then a different segment of your audience gets this headline and you can see how you can compare open rates is the simplest way to manually do it. But you can also go into something like co-schedule or headline analyzer and they'll score and grade your headline or your subject line and um, you can adjust as needed. Kind of cool when they tell you all the things that are wrong with it. Too long, too short, too, too passive, too whatever. So blog um, headlines are written even more, of course, um, well, sometimes more direct, sometimes more, um, well, just less professionally. And uh, again, kind of fun to look at. I love this, this um, website called The Outline. It's just this finally, it was like someone took a news site and they made it look different. And, uh, and they have really cool sections too. <laughs> Very online, must reads, I'm upset. It just draws you into the entire section before you wanna read every single article within it. Okay, so the big point here is what is going to incite action? We always talk about vanity metrics versus meaningful conversions and meaningful actions. So how do we incite that action? And how do we, ask for them to take those actions that we want them to take or just hold their hands and, and watch them do it so seamlessly. So a few ways, of course, how to, we can communicate time and create urgency or one of my favorites is scarcity as well so that there's only so much time to do this or this is now running out or um, you know, this is why people are gathering today for that. And it just makes us feel like we need to read this right away and we can't put it off like everything else we like to put off and say, oh, I'll come back to that, which we don't. And then curiosity and delight, the best way to do it. If you're actually making someone stop what they're doing, 
distract themselves with what you've got to offer and then really live up to it so that they can't wait for the next time you serve them up something super delightful in their subject line. So remember, it's up to you to tell them what to do next. And sometimes this is directly and other times it's just completely indirectly in a way that is just because it's so very you and your brand is that good or your products or your offerings speak for themselves and they can't wait to get in and buy. Uh, I had this happen yesterday when I went on Instagram for the first time in a few days, I was avoiding it. And lo and behold, I get, I get served with this ad for this, like the world's best sleeping earplugs. And I'm a loser who sleeps with earplugs, but mostly because I feel like every partner I've ever had, mostly just my husband, um, snores. And I love a totally silent, but I know they're not good for my ear. Anyway, the whole thing, I was like, for one, I wonder how they targeted me. Is that like women who are married to snorers? Or is it just whatever, ex-swimmers who have ear problems? I don't know. Um, but it was, an, it was the latest example of me like throw my money down as fast as I could. And I thought to myself, it was that, what I said earlier, that hallelujah moment. I didn't know I needed this. I didn't know it exists. There's nothing that's gonna stop me from buying this right now after reading like two reviews and knowing it wasn't a scam, that this product actually exists, that it didn't cost $400, but 40 and bought it on the spot. <laughs> whether I'm a sucker or not. So how do we get there? I know I give these examples a lot and they're usually super nerdy and specific to me, but this is the kind of thing that we want to be able to create where they're not going away to think about it. You guys, they're booking and buying right then. And it's not just because of pent up COVID demand that they can't wait for that party truck to come by and serve them, you know, Prosecco. Uh, but it's because it's something that is like solving their problems like never before. And a lot of us are just vanilla-ishly pushing out our products like they're the same, same all the time. If you've got an entire shopping mall full of products, pick four and get behind them so deeply and don't be afraid to double down on those as the, the entry point the you know starter that is going to climb the ladder and get them to buy more from you but you need to have some kind of way in and if we're just so vague and so broad in our marketing uh it's really really difficult to get someone to feel that kind of hallelujah moment all right let's end on this uh i'd love for you to think about a couple of those headlines the social proof the threat and the gain and I'm going to bring back up those examples, that one page I had earlier that kind of gives the, the demo for you. But if you can, jot some down. Um, I'm going to put Haley on the spot, see if she could come up with a couple for us. <laughs> and remember, these don't just have to be captions. These could be blog posts. And then, of course, you're going to use all the keywords in the world to get people reading that. But when they see or to get it found on the internet for your industry, but when they see that headline, it's a no brainer that they want to read it too, whether or not it's been served up to them from its SEO value. If anyone feels like putting one in the chat, that would be awesome. I'm going to write one for you that I actually went out and put, I hired a guy to do a, um, uh, like a legit poll for me on a thousand small business owners. And I'm going to write you out the subject line.
Haley, are you going to share one with us? <laughs> I just thought of something because I'm sitting here and I'm like, frick, I'm struggling with this. And <laughs> that's like, um, the, the thing that came to me was struggling for a blog post headline. <laughs> um, <laughs> like so 10, 10 ways to start. I was like, wow, there it is. <laughs> oh my God. I love it. 10 ways to start. That is so good. Yeah. What would that be? Gain? Yeah. A gain, uh, yeah, gain, I mean, maybe between gain and social proof, uh, you know, I, I see like the whole, see the face cream that blew up the internet, but yeah. probably more gain, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. The promise is <laughs> better. Can't say no to that. And then I really do love the ones that are the listicles, you know, like three ways to uh, stop consuming plastic or whatever you know like or three like the, the conscious ones I used to work for a startup and uh yeah I had so much fun with that stuff because it was like you know big and buzzy and everyone wanted to do better for the planet so just like giving people ways and how they can contribute and everyone loves a list they're like oh five things I could do yeah totally yeah and turn it into an infographic for me and put it on Pinterest yeah perfect and even like the, th like the threat headlines too you know we uh I did a blog I did an article called uh meats and methane and uh and then I did another one called ma uh, macro macro pollution micro marine oh wow and it was just like subtle and I and I was like you know I think the the title and within itself people were like what macro pollution micro marine I gotta know what this is about so that's awesome yeah Okay, hey, I'm gonna challenge us for the final thing here, you guys. I want you to think of your favorite magazine. And if you can, uh, find it in your news tab or just go to their website directly. And um, find a headline that you resonate or that's like the most, find the most compelling headline to you and, it, and identify whether it was subject matter or the way it was written. and or the ones that turn you off. There's some that give away the farm to me that I'm like, read it, just read it in the headline, got it, you know? Hmm. Here's one, 19 rooftop patios. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Fine. Great Fine. rooftop patios in Calgary, sold, where are we going? <laughs> love it you're right though those top best ofs um i used to work for avenue and west Chet magazine and always we like those perform so well um in newsletters on social on the websites that's awesome okay melissa i'm going to ask you to bring your magazine expertise to this so i'm opening avenue.com right now or it's avenue magazine isn't it no it's just avenue calgary oh, yeah. there we go Okay. I want you to tell us, um, if you would, which of those articles would get the heaviest traffic? And actually, how did that, I mean, I know it matters to you uh, from a sales perspective, you were selling ads on those, right? Mm -hmm. But could you just like eyeball it from both a reader's perspective and from a sales insider or a magazine insider perspective? Um, as to why a certain headline would shine over another. If my phone ever opens avenuecalgary.com. Well, I can tell you anything food um, shines always on Avenue. Right. Any restaurant. We are such foodies in Calgary. So anytime there was like new restaurant, new food, best this, um, like the ice cream, Lanny Boys is a new dog friendly ice cream pop up in downtown Calgary. I bet you that would produce well. Cool. Just because it's different, right? It's different and it's food. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. But when I look at this, the story behind Joe's garage, the Calgary bike repair shop in a shipping container, I'm like, hmm, okay. Hmm. But unless I'm like, well, he's either really cute or which he is, or there's a bike mechanic in me or I don't know it's like gave it okay. away right it's like yeah, yeah. okay it's in there yeah, gave it away uh for no noteworthy innovations in local food service and production well now that's left me wanting more mm -hmm. so many of these just like tell it all Monday on Mars is a new embroidery apparel brand in Calgary 
sorry avenue but that's like the lamest headline i've ever heard well and if what you'll notice likely you guys is anyone that's sponsored those are the ones we you when i worked there we wanted those to produce because they paid for those right yeah. but typically it's the client telling you the tagline not editorial huh. so like they're not very clickable unless they would let us guide them and say you know you're a bank and yeah you're selling your banking but like talk about the top trails to go to in Alberta <laughs> like you know what I mean and sponsor it don't just tell us why you're boring <laughs> well this one that's sponsored actually my old pal Mark Tewksbury how a new online course will help you find success and happiness by his brought to you by his great traits academy but like it's a promise of success and happiness and it's got a how-to how a new online course will help you find success and happiness if that's what you're after yes yeah. please yeah, the 19 great rooftop patios in Calgary, short and sweet. Huh. But then there's so many that are how this, how that, how that. So anyway. like here's another one. Meet four unicorn companies valued at over one billion in Calgary. Oh that's kind yeah. of like, oh wow, cool. What, what do you mean? Totally. <laughs> if it's not clickbait, I'm super interested. Oh, that's cool. That's a cool one. Anyone else finding anything interesting? If you found it on your own, perhaps a uh, favorite magazine site or editorial or I should say news. Or. You know who has good ones, Kelly? Is if, Does anyone ever go to the Weather Network app? No, no. If you go to the Weather Network app, they have, and we just talked about this in my house the other day, but I go there to check the weather, obviously, but they have all these videos and I don't know if anyone else has ever done it, but their captions are so encapsulating. I'm always watching the videos like on camera. My favorite, now. my favorite is the weather network app. I'm is obsessed that? with it. I don't <laughs> know why, but I am obsessed with the what they are. They put out some of the best content i agree did you watch a video where they almost went over the dam <laughs> i have not seen that one <laughs> but okay. you have to understand though too is that they're very good at being regional and i'm on the east coast now right. so if it was if it was out west it may not have populated into my feed well here's one you guys tonight's montreal canadians game will make history here's why oh so good I'm reading on the Globe and Mail right now, and these are slaying what we just saw on Avenue with apologies to Avenue. Um, <laughs> this is an opinion piece, but hey, we can all be opinion pieces and editorial because we are our own businesses. We're not news journalists. Um, opinion, Green Party melts down as many expect fall federal election. What, meltdown? Tell me the drama. Uh, another one, how to keep workers safe from COVID-19, colon, focus on the air they breathe. That's like pretty kind of like, you know, I don't know, <laughs> profound. Yeah. <laughs> here's what you need to, waiting for a second shot. Here's what you need to know. Another one, this is how close Canada is to ending the pandemic. Wow, we could learn a lot from these guys. These are, you know, it's again, it's like professional journalists can teach us so, so much about, about so many things in our own journalistic efforts as we're now all writers and publishers and editors. <laughs> <laughs> and salespeople. That's great, Allison. Thanks for that. Any final thoughts from anyone? Any questions or ideas? Anyone proud of a headline that they've written lately or a caption that perhaps performed well and you know it was thanks to the words you used? Or a campaign, perhaps? Mm -hmm. Contests too. Contests seem to get people engaged as well. Hey? Totally. Yeah. I win. Think, yeah, win. Absolutely. Like we're all trying to win the Alberta vaccine lottery, as weird as that is. Um, but we, we also know that things that are oftentimes contests, you get people entering just for the sake of the contest and then they bounce afterwards, which fine. But um, pretty incredible if you can create copy that people can't wait to read again and again each week. Like we've got going on with the Beeline BMX bike park that our kids go to and that I've started loving as well. B 
because the owner Ryan is so funny. Like it'll be like the the subject of the email, and they're mostly about COVID, but he's made it hilarious how he's just riding it out and he's trying not to complain, but he's complaining. And I can't wait to read them every day. And it's done so far in getting us like, you know, back in the door again, because he stayed top of mind, even though he really had nothing to say. And he's not, I wouldn't say he's the smartest guy in the world, but he sure has nailed the, his voice. He's just being himself. The last subject line is like, the best email subject you ever, or email you ever read was probably a few months ago or something like that. <laughs> okay, everyone, thanks so much for joining today. And uh, hopefully you found um, some inspiration or at least got a couple uh, wheels turning about some headline writing skills. And I encourage you, if you know that this can be a difference maker to just start writing. That is the number one rule of writing. Everything you wrote a year ago is gonna feel like amateur hour compared to the more that you practice and the more you get it out there. And, um, and your headlines and, and sound bites will get better and better too. Don't be boring if you can help it. <laughs> We have two more Wednesday workshops to go before we shift gears into a really fun new um, theme and sort of go forward plan in July that we're gonna tell you about very soon. And we're getting now into some uh, paid content stuff. We've got our uh, new paid digital advertising courses launching um, very shortly here. So we're moving into some of the audience targeting tactics, boosted content, as well as like really strategic retargeting and remarketing campaigns, mostly on Facebook and Instagram, a little bit on LinkedIn and Google, but we'd love to see you again next week. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks everyone. Have a Thanks, great week. Bye. 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 Bye.